City Jazz Sessions is about great music, arts, and entertainment. We are located in St. Louis, Missouri, and available to performance art lovers worldwide. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. You can email us at cityjazzsessions at gmail.com. All right, I am Leka, your host of City Jazz Sessions today, um, local St. Louis-based singer, and today our special guest is Erin Bodie. We're so excited to have her. Um, we're going to be talking about her new album and um, what she's been up to lately and upcoming performances. So Erin, thank you so much for being with us today. And I have to say that you are our first female artist that we've oh. had um, since we've started the podcast in a new format. So congrats on that. <laughs> thank you. I feel very honored. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you for so, having me. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, obviously, you know, many people know you. Um, based in St. Louis, when I shared your picture on my personal Facebook page, I got a lot of messages like, oh my gosh, I love Erin and <laughs> her music is great. So you're really a household name for, you know, in the St. Louis um, area and, you know, beyond on the jazz scene. So oh, let's get into this yeah. new album. So this is the ninth, ninth album, right? Yeah, something like that. I'm starting yes, to Yes, yes, you've done so many. Oh my gosh, I love it. So um, it's yours, your song, right? Is the name of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it also, was, yeah, go ahead. Well, it's also the name of this project that I've started um, where um, I've had a couple of requests uh, over the last few years that kind of were the impetus for this whole idea. Um, people asked me if I would record either their favorite song, a special version just for them. I also had a few people ask me if I would write a song for them. And that's sort of started to be the main thing that I've been doing is writing songs for people, you know, listening to their stories, getting to know them, um, hearing what's important to them, who they want to dedicate the song to, what they want to say with it, and, and then writing something that fits the description that they've given me. I always ask them to tell me, you know, what is their favorite style of music? You know, how do they want it to feel and be presented? And, and then I take it from there and I try to create something that's really special for them that they can keep forever. I love oh. it. I love it. And if our viewers want to, you know, really see what this project is all about, they can go to your song for always. Um, and then if they want to mm -hmm. see the actual album, um, they can go to Aaron Bodie. Um, dot com. So yeah. I'm going to bring that up just because I want to highlight one of, um, there's an, a place called The Stories in it where this is actually my favorite song. I think that was by <sighs> this person um, on the album. Let me just share my screen real quick. It's really nice of you to highlight this part. This is my kind of my new favorite pet project with this whole thing is, is, um, is I'm, I've started this blog where I'm sharing the stories of each of the songs that have been included on this album. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. Yes. I love the idea. And this one um, was by Jim. I guess there was a person named Jim um, mm -hmm. and the song title is because of you. And that <laughs> is my favorite song on the album. Mm -hmm. It starts off really kind of like slow, and then it's really up, temp, up tempo, a beat. And he said, um, so Jim wanted to say thank you to his family and his friends for being there when he needed them most. And we can really all identify with the lyrics and the music. Uh, so I just, there, this project just really resonates with me so much Aww. as an artist myself, because it's all about connecting with the people that you're performing with or for. Mm -hmm. And this project just does that in a, on a really deep level. 
So do you want to tell us, can you see the um, site, the website, do you want to kind of share, like kind of explain a little bit more about what's on here? Yeah, so um, obviously the there's a welcome page that sort of gives you a little description of what we do, but um, the Your Song page is, is kind of the home page and, mm -hmm. and it walks you through the process a little bit, um, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of inspiration for why you might want to have a song recorded for you. I mean, it's a great way to celebrate an anniversary or a wedding. Maybe you want your first dance, you know, to be a song written for you. Um, maybe you want to propose in song. That's certainly an option. <laughs> yeah. We've done several lullabies, which has been really, really special. Um, lots of songs for Valentine's Day and lots of birthday songs, songs, you know, given to somebody as a birthday gift. Oh, yes. It's just been it, yeah, I mean, I and I always encourage people if they have me do a song for them to please, please take some pictures or video just because I want to kind of want to be there too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's been really special to be able to, um, you know, kind of experience this with them um, when we present the songs to them. But yeah, so you get a little bit of description, um, and then there's some samples of mm -hmm. some of the work that we've already done a few pictures of the process and some of our um, happy customers. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so, and then um, there's a little form that you can fill out um, that will get the process started for you. That's on another page. Mm -hmm. um, but it, um, you know, you can answer the usual questions. It'll be the let's yeah. talk page, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, and, you know, we'll tell you what we need to kind of know to get started. And mm -hmm. uh, my favorite question on this form is the your five desert island albums, not only because it's fun, but it's, yeah. it's extremely helpful for me to know this going in, because mm -hmm. obviously you want this song to sound like something that, you know, they're going to respond to and that they're going to feel very at home with. And so knowing what is the most new, meaningful music to them has been really helpful. And um, I think I was telling you before we started that I, I actually just came here um, yes. from a session this afternoon or today, an all day session where we wrote and recorded a new song for somebody. They live in Scotland and it's, I think it's gonna be a Christmas gift for the wife. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm excited to see how it goes, but um, they, the husband rec uh, requested that um, we think about the music of Dire Straits and Paul Simon and um, let's see who else, uh, some, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, for I'm forgetting now, Passenger, which is sort of an mm -hmm. indie artist yeah. right now. Um, so there were, there were quite a few inspirations and we were so excited because Todd, my partner and I, we hit on, you know, some really key elements of those and we feel really proud of what we did today. So it's exciting. Oh, I bet. And I'm sure it's fun for you to, when you're researching, you know, elements that you want in the song, just, you know, mm -hmm. getting inspiration and kind of putting it all together like a puzzle. Yeah. So really creative. Oh, it is. And so I always ask them, like I said, I ask, you know, once I have, um, once they filled out this form, I have a general idea of what they'd like to do. Then I like to have a phone conversation with them. Um, and I like to talk to them and get an idea of really what's important to them. Um, maybe some key moments in their life uh, that would, they'd like to maybe express in the song. Um, of course, I'd love it if they send me pictures. In fact, the song that we wrote today, we were really, really inspired by the photograph that they sent of the view from their house. They just moved to an island off of Scotland. Wow. And so they sent a picture both of the sunset and the view that they have, um, you know, of, from their island. And it's just like, okay, well, this is what this song sounds like to me. So right. it almost was easier to write because of that picture. Yeah. So. And, you know, I noticed in a lot of your writings, they're very visual. Um, you know, there's one song called Holiday. So it's mm -hmm. talking about like fall in the beginning and the leaves yeah. falling. And um, 
you know, when you hear the song, you can picture what's happening. So I can see that how this would be, you know, perfect for you to see a picture and then be able to really bring those elements to life in in the song so that people can visualize what you're talking about. Yeah, it's been really interesting too, like, because every, you know, person that we work with is very different, obviously. They Mm -hmm. have different wanting to have a song they have you know really different tastes and and different personalities and you know I I think the last song that I wrote before this one we did today was for a man who was giving it also to his wife for her birthday present but I asked him to you know tell me some interesting stories he didn't give me much information he really kind of kept it to her favorite music and then a couple little key moments so it was it was very little information but that made for a really interesting song too. And and then I've had people send me pages and pages and pages of their life story, (laughs) you know? So it's like, you can, you don't know what you're gonna get and you have to figure out how to say those things that they give you. This is really, really fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so (laughs) I just wanna remind everybody that um, the project is your song for always.com. So, um, if you're interested in having having Aaron write a song for you, you can go there and see how to get started. And then, so this, all of this came about, you started this when, 2018, when did you start yeah. this, Aaron? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then um, you put those songs together in an album, mm-hmm. your song. Yeah, uh, volume and- one volume one yes yes, of many more to come and I think that's so exciting for you know the people who had you know asked you to write a song for it to be an actual album that they can go to Spotify or Bandcamp or wherever and have family and friends you know buy it so and I'm sure it's such a treasure for for big fans of yours as well Mm. (laughs) it is it's really really wonderful for me be, to be able to, you know, ask the client, would it be okay if I include this on an album? Mm-hmm. You know, the song is, is special to me as I hope it is to you. And I would love right. to share it with as many people as possible. That's really a gratifying experience. And like you said earlier, the connection that it allows me to have with people that maybe have listened to me for a while, or, you know, we've done songs for people that really don't know my music, but like the idea of having something mm. created with them. And you know, so maybe that's a new relationship, but it becomes a very strong relationship pretty quickly because I learn about their lives and we share these experiences and then I give them something for them to give to somebody else. And so it's just, it's, you know, it's sort of like, um, it just kind of like avalanched into this, this thing that I'm, I'm just so proud of and happy about. And I would expect, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the first person to have done this. And I would expect other people probably will do it in the future. But um, I think it suits my personality and how much I love to talk to people and, and get to know them. And it just, it works really well for me. And I, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to do it. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, even before you started doing this, I, there was an article that I was reading on you, I think in the Ladu news, and um, it was from 2012. Oh, and wow. it was talking about uh, there was a song that you sang for or you were inspired to sing it um, it was a young patient named Caitlin yeah. Jackson mm-hmm. so you that know song. even though you started this later you are always you know I'm not always but I'm speaking for you inspired <laughs> because of other people your music has been inspired by their stories Um, And that song was called The Space Between. Yeah. 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 That was an amazing project. And we were asked by Children's Hospital if we would, because they wanted to kind of, um, I don't know, kind of emphasize some of the amazing stuff that they do at Children's Hospital, especially in Mm -hmm. their heart center. Um, They have a really special program there. And so they asked if we would meet with one of their patients who's had several surgeries and was just doing so well with, with all of her treatment. And they asked if we would tell her story. And that was just an amazing experience because also we were able to include a recording of her heartbeat in the song. 
Oh wow! Is, um, yeah, the song starts with her heart. It's, it's just so neat. Yeah, it was really special. So there were a lot of um, a lot of really kind of special moments in that process that I think maybe did kind of spark this love for doing this in me. I think. Right. Yeah. That connection. Mm-hmm. You know, and and not only is there a connection between that person that this song might be inspired by, but like I said before, we can, a lot of us can relate to the songs as if we've had certain challenges or we know someone who has, um, yeah, it's, it's, we can all relate to, to other people's stories. Yeah. The beautiful thing about music. It is one of the most magical things, isn't it? Like mm-hmm. there's so many songs that are classics. I mean, the reason they're classic is because there's a sentiment in there a message that everyone knows about and everybody relates to and they we can be we can be a part of it together and that's just it's awesome yeah well so what um let's talk about some of your upcoming uh performances yeah. i know you have a holiday show at the wildly yeah wildly up. Up. Mm-hmm. on uh december 17th and um that's an annual concert that we do of course we didn't do it last year but um, we've been doing it for several years and it's one of my favorite things to do every year. It's just, it's very festive. It's, it's a wonderful audience and we get to see all of our Illinois people when we're over there. So it's really nice. And, yeah, uh, and that and theater is a beautiful historic, um, theater, mm-hmm. the wildly. Yeah. It's really nice and it's small and intimate. Mm-hmm. So there's no bad seats. Like you just, you know, you're all there, you know, I can see everyone's face you know, if there's yeah. the line, good. <laughs> so it's, mm-hmm, it's really nice. And that's the first night um, of a tour. Then I, I keep going East and I'm doing an East coast tour after that. So we'll be in um, uh, Baltimore and New York city and Philadelphia. And so, yeah, it's going to be a really fun. I I'm excited because I get to play with, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the pianist Taylor Eggsty. He's a really, really great jazz pianist for the people that maybe aren't familiar with him. He actually was Mm -hmm. just nominated for a Grammy yesterday. Congrats to him. Yeah, I haven't worked with him yet, but um, we've known each other for a while. So I'm just very excited to kind of get a fun experience, a new adventure on this little tour. So it's going to be great. (laughs) Yeah. And do you have a core um, of musicians that you work with or that are in your band that are normally with you? Or? You know, it's kind of, it's sort of become regional at this point, you know, okay. I, I recently just moved to Nashville. Mm-hmm. So um, I have a group of musicians that I really love working with here. And then um, I have my group of St. Louis musicians that are right. you know, just wonderful. And when I travel, it just is sort of like whoever's available, you know, I just mm-hmm. call people and <laughs> see, you know, can you do this? Can you do this? So right. It's a, uh, it's kind of a shifting thing, but that, you know, keeps it exciting and fun and new and fresh and all that good stuff. So, yeah, the sax player on the, the song, my favorite song from um, your mm-hmm. song, he was amazing. On David that. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. You really just made that song pop. He is just absolutely. I mean, I, my husband actually is a, um, he was a saxophone player before he started playing bass with me. Mm-hmm. And um, he grew up listening to David Sanborn. I mean, he was the most influential, probably saxophone player, along with, you know, John Coltrane and, um, you know, just all the famous guys. Yeah. But, you know, he's one of the guys who he just modeled his, his inspiration, his sound, you know, anything that he could glean from David Sanborn was, you know, so I, this, it was an absolute thrill. In fact, when we first listened to the song after receiving the recording from David Sanborn, my husband, he kind of teared up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> so for him. Yeah. So it was really great. Oh, since you mentioned your husband, I have to say this. So whenever I Googled you to do my research for the podcast, um, the number one Google question for Aaron Bodie mm-hmm. was, is Aaron Bodie married? <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was so funny. Years. I thought, I wonder how many people had to type that in before that became the top Google uh, search for Aaron. I wonder about that too, actually. Like, how many 
request to that <laughs> need before they become yeah right so we've answered it right here on city jazz sessions yeah that's your scoop. sorry guys <laughs> kind of a little bit old news but yeah <laughs> funny yeah okay so yes so you've got the holiday um concert at the wildly and then yeah. eastern tour now, I know you've done a few European tours. Are you um, planning anything for overseas in the it, near future? The very beginning stages were um, probably hoping for spring. So um, I've got um, a, a group of people that I've worked with over there uh, mm -hmm. just before the pandemic. And so I've been talking to them about um, what things are looking like, you know, in which months and trying to get okay. some some ideas, but I would like to expand because most of most of the touring I've done in Europe has been in Italy. So I'm trying to um, hopefully I'll get to France and maybe Germany and April in Paris. <laughs> that, oh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> romantic. Yes. So romantic. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So the first time I saw you was um, jazz, the jazz bistro before mm -hmm. it was renovated, you know, yeah. it was when it was just that little alley, like very narrow room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a character. Yeah. It had a lot of character. I mm -hmm. kind of miss that, even though the, you know, it, the seats are better, you know, it's more mm -hmm. comfortable. You can see, you know, everything a lot better, no matter where you're seated. But yeah, I do kind of miss the old uh, character of before it was renovated. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So is there anything else you want to share with our viewers before we wrap it up today? And I'm so, so excited that we got to interview you. I'm so excited too. It's really generous of you to ask me to come on. This has been really fun. And, and um, you've had some amazing guests. So like I said, it's a real honor to be included in your podcast. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. It's an honor for us. Um, <laughs> And we can't, can't wait to see the next volumes of your song. I, I can't wait either. I mean, it's just, a, like I said, it's like an adventure every time I start mm -hmm. a new project for somebody. And yeah, I mean, that's just, that's kind of my main focus now, along with my usual performing and touring right. and that kind of thing. So it's just been a really great blessing for me. And um, so I'll, I'll probably keep doing that. I, I'm, I am kind of planning uh, another album just of my own. Yeah. Um, uh, so, sort of more in the jazz vein, but um, okay. that'll be happening at some point. Now, I know I read somewhere that though this is an, was an early article that you didn't want to just be known as just a jazz artist because you don't mm -hmm. want to get boxed into that. But I feel like when people think of Aaron Bodie, they think of jazz, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now, so how are you feeling about that now? Well, you know, and I guess, I don't know if I was misrepresented or anything I you know it's not that I don't want to be included in the jazz genre it's more that I don't always feel worthy of it I just mm. I'm so um I just revere that that art form with such high regard and I you know I think my background um is definitely there's some jazz in it but but my growing up um, included a lot of folk music, a lot of pop. And when right. I'm writing music, you know, it's, it's interesting to see what comes out. The, the, the jazz is, is sort of subtle when it comes to my writing. Um, and so I think I just, I like to be honest about it. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't right. want to meet anyone. And I sort of feel like I always kind of am drawn to artists that maybe cross over a couple genres and, you know, I like for people to maybe be able to decide for themselves what they're hearing when they listen. You know, like, I guess some of my favorite artists are like Paul Simon or Sean Colvin, you know, like these are people that can can really represent themselves very well in a few different veins. And, you know, I just kind of like to experience different genres and, and try my hand at them and so right. I just hope people like, you know, that's my goal is just to entertain them. <laughs> that's really yes. all. <laughs> Absolutely. So. And, and you can tell in your music, it's not just, you know, straight up jazz. And mm. I think it's more maybe they kind of put you in that category because maybe the way your voice sounds. But if you're, 
listening to like the music itself, I can see where you're like, you know, this is not really jazz. Like, yeah. Well, it's funny. You can never win really when it comes to putting yourself into a class. I mean, I I remember I released um, my least jazzy record to date when I (laughs) released The Little Garden, which came out in, I think, 2010 or no, 2008. And I think one of the first comments on maybe it was iTunes or something was, this isn't jazz. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, you know, like, don't talk to me. I just, I just write the stuff. I don't know, you know. <laughs> right. So yes, you know. that's funny. So it's just. Yeah, I like, I like the album. Is that the one with the, with the umbrella? Mm-hmm, red cover. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So do you have. How- you have you're very artistic and i want to encourage everyone to go follow you on instagram everybody oh, music um because in your stories you you post a lot of art oh like really <laughs> beautiful art so you have a great eye not just for you know music but oh. art but also just for like visual art well like i was saying with the the photograph that this man nick sent to us um so that we could write this song for his wife that was like our main inspiration today you know yeah. and it, it really it I, when i see beautiful scenery or wonderful talented artists you know expressing themselves visually that's something i don't have i don't have that ability and so i think i'm just sort of drawn to it with sort of a, a sense of awe you know like mm-hmm. a little bit of envy like if I were to express myself that this way, you know, how would I do it? I, I just, my imagination starts going when I see beautiful scenery or beautiful works of art. And so I, I think I post those things because it's sort of a way of like, this is today's inspiration. This is what made me feel something deeply right. and sort of a way that may, and maybe I can share that with people, let them enjoy it too. Maybe they'll get something out of it, you know? Absolutely. I love it. So I would recommend <laughs> other people, you know, because I don't see a lot of people posting art, you know, yeah. so it's kind of nice and refreshing if you enjoy art to have a space yeah. where. I, know, that's what I love about the social media things. I mean, that you know, it can be really kind of, um, you know, all consuming sometimes and not a good way, but there are some really pleasant things about it. And I like to try to maybe access those use them you know for for that purpose instead (laughs) yeah absolutely um oh one thing i do want to touch on before we wrap up so you you grew up in church your dad's uh lutheran pastor yes that's right and um so you got started singing in in church choir Mm -hmm. How, what was that like? And are you going to, have you released a Christian album before? Or is that something? I, I released an album of hymns. Okay. Uh, yeah. With string arrangements. So it was a kind of a special project. In fact, I sort of did it, especially for my church body. Um, and mm-hmm. they, they kind of were interested in having a collection because we, we were playing a lot at our church with like members of the St. Louis symphony and <laughs> we had some really nice arrangements. And so, wow. They said, if you ever make a recording of that, you know, I think that would be something people would enjoy. So we did. We made a recording of okay. those arrangements. Yeah. But I love, I mean, I love church music. I I really love the history of it. I mean, as Lutherans, there's a lot of old hymns, you know, that, mm-hmm. that come into play in, in our services. And and there's some some that are that really are timeless and they can yeah. be interpreted in in newer ways that you know, they're just classic. And I like to spend, spend my thoughts on that sometimes. Right. And you know, you never get tired of singing them, you know, the classic Mm -hmm. hymns. Yeah. There are some songs, you know, like pop songs, after you hear them so many times, like, oh my God, I never want to hear that song again. But you can sing Mm -hmm. the same hymns in church every Sunday. And it's like, that I don't get tired of it. No. And you know, the kind of the purpose of the hymn is to be packed full of content you know I mean they're really the messages are really strong and Mm -hmm. I think that's that's something that we sort of long for I think in our music you know a lot of pop music as wonderful as it is you know different artists give you different levels of content and sometimes Mm -hmm. you're getting a lot of repeated lines and Mm -hmm. fun you know it can be it can be nice and that can be effective too but a lot of times those older hymns really have 
so much information and words of comfort and quoting scripture so that you know you're you're memorizing it as you're singing it and yeah. it becomes a part of you i mean that's that's something i actually something that i'm going to start um uh, over the next few months is a podcast um i have a <laughs> It'll probably just be an audio podcast, but I have a friend who's a screenwriter and he and I sort of bonded over the fact that we both really, really love lyrics. And mm -hmm. we have so many songs that have become a part of us and have impacted us in such strong ways. And we know we're not the only ones. And so we really kind of want to discuss the history of songs, you know, some of the mm -hmm. classic pop songs and, and the content of the lyrics, which I don't think is, a, is something that people focus on enough in my opinion i, I really want to dive into the content of those lyrics uh the the patterns of them um you know the the way that they cause a singer to phrase them that sort of thing yeah um, i love that and i think you'll have a lot of artists that would be very interested in that i hope so i mean I, it's gonna be it's gonna be very very gratifying to talk about so absolutely um, yeah, so I'm excited about that because I think lyrics maybe don't get, um, they don't get enough credit, I don't think, you know, a lot of, I'm guilty of this too, but a lot of times I hear the music first and it's what mm -hmm. draws me in at the initial, you know, go round. but the lyrics are what become a part of you. I mean, when you memorize a song, those thoughts and those sentiments they come out at the oddest times, you know? Like how often are you like driving down the road or you're in a situation and a lyric pops into your head and you're like, oh, now that makes sense. And it's because right. it's in you, you know? And yeah. so I, I think it's important to value the, those great lyrics that really succinctly express great emotions or experiences and so, right. yeah. So when you're writing, do you, are you starting with the lyrics or are you starting with the music or does it just vary? It does vary. Um, a lot of times there's a musical structure or some kind of rhythmic pattern established first, which is very mm -hmm. helpful for writing lyrics. Um, but a lot of times the inspiration for a song will come from maybe one line or something. Like this is what needs to be said mm -hmm. and so how do we do that? And what does that sound like musically? And, and then you sort of take it from there, you know? So the pieces fall into place kind of hodgepodge, you know, like yeah. you get this little piece and then you, oh, now we can do this. And then, you know, so, I, I mean, I've, I've never considered myself a writer or a pro prolific writer. I mean, I only started writing songs in my late twenties. I mean, I wrote mm -hmm. a few in my early twenties, but I always kind of had the, in my mind that writers are writers and I was not born a writer. That's, that's how I felt mm -hmm. about writing. And I feel like another wonderful thing about this project that I started where I'm actually committing myself to writing something. For yeah. somebody. I have a deadline and I have to write the song. And it's been like one of the most beautiful challenges because like I said, I've always sort of a lot of times when I start writing something, if it's just for me, I'll be like, you know, after a week or something, eh, that's, that's no good, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I doubt myself and I throw it out or, you know, try to start over. But when it's for somebody else, I'm, I don't have to use myself as inspiration. I can think, what does that person need me to say for them to yeah. tell their life? You know, so it's, I have a responsibility and that brings about a completely different level of you know, effort and creativity and all of that. So it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> I sort of had to trick myself into <laughs> writing. Right. Oh, I totally get that a hundred percent. But how smart you're like, you know what? I want to write more albums. How can I get this done? Exactly. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I need somebody to force me to do it. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So do you have a favorite album that you've written so far? Mm. It's hard to pick. I mean, I think there are just, there are songs on each album that are just really kind of like in the middle of me, you know, like part of who I am. Um, 
but I, I have different, I have favorite parts of different albums. Like, I mean, one of my favorite things about the little garden album that we were talking about earlier with the red cover yeah. um, is we recorded that in a, in a studio in Southern California. Um, and we recorded it to analog tape. And that was something I had always wanted to do because that's how everything was recorded before, like the nineties. Right. <laughs> and yeah. it really, really has a great sound. I mean, it's, it's, it's very superior and it's a living, breathing feeling that you have when you're listening to something on tape. And so I would like to do that again. Um, mm -hmm. But that record is special to me because of the richness of it, I think, sonically. But also, those are some of the best songs that we wrote as a band, and in my opinion. I mean, just yeah, the they just have, they're kind of right in the center of like, the best things that we did. And I, I just, I love that. And I mean, like I said, though, there are songs on every album that I just absolutely love. So, um, but. Yeah, I, like I really, I really like that album. What instruments did you have on that one? Oh boy. So we had our normal uh, band members. So we had um, Adam on piano, Adam Manis um, mm -hmm. and Sid on bass. Um, Derek Phillips played drums. And we invited um, a really great woodwind player. I mean, he's primarily a tenor saxophone player, but he plays um, woodwinds in general, um, named John Ellis. And he came from New York and um, spent that time with us. And a lot of, we were, I was actually talking to Adam a few weeks ago about this kind of reminiscing about the recording of that album. And, and he, Adam did like prearrange some of the, parts that John ended up playing like because we would have little horn sections which mm -hmm. was really nice um, along with his improvised solos but there was one um, section like that where he played multiple instruments that he improvised I mean he created it himself in the studio and that was a moment you know like, that was a yeah. real moment to watch him just create on the spot like a whole choir of, right. of woodwinds I mean that really is something you don't forget and and it just becomes so special to you when you see you have that like forever you know mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure so, mm -hmm. so yeah. at, I think that's I think that's we, we had some great um, background vocals by a, a really great uh, California uh, singer songwriter named Gregory Page who I'm I've been a fan of ever since I met him there um, he did some really nice harmonies with me on some of the songs and, um, and then I'm, I suppose we just implemented whatever was around the studio. <laughs> I'd have to go back and listen and find all the little, you know, little details, but yeah, that was, that was a really special album. I, I like, there was one song in there that I really liked, but I can't remember the name of it, but mm -hmm. I know I favored it. Oh, also, what do you see? What do you think is the best way for people to support your music through? I know, like a lot of times we stream through like iTunes mm -hmm. or, um, you know, Spotify. I know that's how I listen. But for artists, a lot of times, you know, I know Bandcamp is mm -hmm. very artist friendly. So we really mm -hmm. try to push people to, you know, support mm -hmm. through Bandcamp. But what what would you say? I mean, you know, I use the streaming services too, and I've sort of resigned myself to understanding <laughs> that there is no money in <laughs> selling music anymore. I mean, if you really, really want to like make my day, you could buy a physical album, which I yeah. have plenty of, mm -hmm. but well, most of them, I actually am out of little garden albums, just so you know, but okay. um, <laughs> I'm working on getting some more, but um, yeah, I mean, if you want to consume the music, I, I think maybe maybe a nice thing to do for any artist would be to share their music. You know, yeah. you know that somebody doesn't know about one of your favorite artists, tell people about it, like evangelize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Good so, point. Yeah, I mean that's that's that really means a lot to I think every musician when when somebody knows that they're appreciated and then that they're being talked about, you know, amongst. Yeah people who want, who appreciate music. That's, it's a good feeling. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Okay. So that is all, those are all the questions that I had and I'm so excited um, that we had you on our first female artist uh, on the jazz sessions. We've had so many guys. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> those are cool too. I like them. Yeah, guys are cool too, but it's, it's funny because Warren was looking at our uh, our stats and most of our viewers were guys and it was like, well, we've really only had guys on the, <laughs> That's so funny. On the show. So anyway, hopefully yeah. we'll get some more. Hopefully we've tipped the scales for you. Yes, a at least 50-50. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, you awesome. do. A, I mean, this is a great podcast and congratulations. It looks great. It's very cool. It's you're, you have great you. questions. This has been really fun for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to play the outro and everybody check Aaron Bodie out, AaronBodie.com or your song for always.com. Check her out on Instagram and Facebook, Aaron Bodie Music. <laughs> and that's it. That's all we have tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's great. It's a 501c3 company dedicated to music education and appreciation. The CEO is Magic Man 50. And for more ways to connect with City Jazz Sessions, visit cityjazzsessions.wixsite.com slash St. Louis. The City Jazz Sessions team includes host, content director, and guest coordinator, jazz great Ronnie Barrage. Follow Ronnie at RonnieBarrage.biz. Host, website designer, graphic artist, content director, and guest coordinator singing...